Hi folks, welcome back to our channel. Today we'll be talking about driving in Mexico. Every time we go to a new location, we like to have the flexibility of exploring it on our own schedule and not depend on tours, buses or other people. So naturally, we like to rent a car and travel to the places we choose at a time we choose. Being in Mexico for an extended period of time, we decided to take a trip to one of the most visited archaeological sites in the country, Teotihuacan Pyramids. Teotihuacan is located roughly 60 kilometers north of Mexico City. We had several reasons to rent a car. First one, Teotihuacan is a very popular site and gets crowded with tourists by noon. We really wanted to get there before the opening hours. Another reason was that the day we chose to travel there was also the day we had to move out from our Airbnb and move into a new one. We didn't want to waste our weekend on managing our luggage, waiting for check-in time in our new apartment and other routine tasks. We could just put our luggage in the car and not worry about it. So renting a car could help us save a lot of time and hustle. Seems like a great idea, eh? Well, sort of. It all started really well on a Friday night when we went to a local office of a rental company we use back home. We rented a car in Mexico City. It's the first time I'm going to be driving in Mexico. We used the same company we use in Canada and it is open every day, 9 to 6. It's located in a central location on Reforma, so it's very convenient. And uh, the person that was helping us, Daniel, was very friendly and he even gave us his personal phone number in case we have any issues. We had some points collected, so the actual rental was free, but since we're international uh, drivers, we had to pay an insurance. Saturday morning, we got our luggage, placed it in the trunk, and headed towards Teotihuacan. According to the navigator, a 55 kilometer drive that would have taken us 45 minutes in Canada will last one hour 30 minutes. And this was early morning on Saturday without traffic. My Google Maps had default setting to avoid tolls. So we took the route via free road. Wait till the end of this video to hear about our experience on the paid road. The first thing we noticed was the road quality. Lots of potholes, or as they're called here, bache, frequent road merging and lane narrowing, Light right. curvy turns on highway ramps that make driving very unsafe, and marking on the highway is inconsistent. Also, another unexpected surprise was so-called tope, which are speed bumps. They appear out of nowhere as you drive on a one-lane road or a four-lane avenue, it doesn't matter. The important thing is, pay attention to the drivers in front of you. If they are slowing down, there must be a tope ahead of you. The best part is, they are all different sizes. They can be short and bumpy or long and flat. I'm really happy we had a bigger car. Otherwise, the sedan or a smaller hatchback most definitely would have had some scratches on its bumper. Just in general, driving style in Mexico is a bit unsafe. You would rarely see people using signal to merge into another lane. There's a lot of motorcyclists just switching lanes unpredictably or just don't mind the lanes at all and try to squeeze between the cars. Stop signs are mostly ignored. Drivers may slow down, but never come to a full stop. It's more like a rolling stop instead of a full stop. Also, stop signs are hard to see. Sometimes they're covered with leaves or are just too small to notice. Same as with stop signs, traffic lights are very small in size, hard to see and switch light very fast. Imagine you're on the right lane of a five-lane avenue and the traffic light is on the other side on the left. Another peculiar thing that we've noticed was the freeway ramps that go in waves. We call them plasticine roads because they look like they melted under their own weight. I assume that the materials used to build the roads were not of the best quality and some quality control procedures were ignored. Unfortunately, this happens a lot in developing countries as budgets get cut and redistributed between corrupt parties. Once again, it's only an assumption. One more important thing worth mentioning is police. We heard a lot of stories where foreigners got randomly stopped with the purpose of getting a bribe or mordida. Honestly, this doesn't sound too shocking for us because we've experienced the same problem back home. Russian traffic control is also infamous for extortion. We didn't get stopped, thankfully, but our rental company representative told us to be mindful of police and walked us through several possible scenarios. He even gave us his personal cell phone number in case we got pulled by the police and need help, which basically means if they pull you over and ask for the bribe, just call me immediately. We did encounter police though, while in a traffic jam on a highway. 
there was a really bad accident and it was in a place where eight lane highway forks into four lane highway. Police was on scene. There were about 20 or 30 police officers there and they closed two right lanes in the place of an accident and the remaining traffic was trying to merge into the remaining two lanes. Mind you, this included heavy loaded trucks, buses, garbage trucks and motorcyclists that were trying to squeeze between lanes. It was a mess. And the police didn't even try to do anything to manage the traffic. At some point we were getting squeezed from both sides by two cars and only when I honked pretty aggressively, police kindly intervened and stopped the cars to let us drive through. I just returned the car to the rental place and I must say <laughs> this has been quite an adventure. So driving in Mexico is is challenging and if you've only been driving in Canada or US this will be like an extreme ride. Drivers were nervous and just like rude so it's <laughs> it's crazy I don't know at the end of the day like the paid road didn't really I mean it was a bigger highway but it's not that much of a difference not that much of a value that you get and the quality of the pavement is also not really good. I'm not sure if it's worth it but if you're an experienced driver, if you feel confident, then maybe you should try it. Otherwise, uh, it's not worth the nerves, honestly. <laughs> so regarding paid roads, we decided to take a toll road back from Teotihuacan and we're happy to see that the route time changed from one and a half hours to only one hour. That was encouraging. We paid 91 pesos to get on the highway and we're expecting to see a road with better quality of pavement and marking. Honestly, there wasn't much of a difference. The only significant difference I noticed on this route that we actually drove on the highway and not on the avenue, which meant there wouldn't be any speed bumps and less cars. Well, we ended up spending the same one and a half hours on route because of the accident we mentioned previously. And that experience was worse than all the potholes, speed bumps and wavy roads. Being almost squeezed by a truck and a bus is something I don't want to experience ever again. And now the economic side of this trip. Be mindful of hidden fees when you rent a car. We got points collected from our previous rides and it was enough to get one free day for our rental. I also used my credit card insurance when I rent a car. That wasn't the case in Mexico. Most of the companies don't recognize international insurance or credit card insurance. You have to buy local insurance. And I would like to emphasize you absolutely must buy insurance when you rent a car in Mexico. I hope our story is encouraging enough to persuade you. So we ended up paying roughly 1000 pesos for insurance coverage, which was somewhat equal to a regular rental day cost anyway. That included third party liability insurance and vehicle damage insurance. Another 110 pesos to fill up the gas, 91 pesos for paid highway and 50 pesos for parking on Teotihuacan site. And it all comes to 1250 pesos. And now's the best part. We randomly checked Uber pricing for going to and from Teotihuacan and it appears it was the same as we spent on the car. Can you imagine? 700 pesos to get two pyramids and 300 pesos to get back. We could have avoided all this stress and just sit back and relax on the backseat of the car for the same price. Well, you live, you learn. If you do decide to rent a car and drive in Mexico, here's what we suggest. Get a bigger car like an SUV. Make sure you have proper insurance. Get a contact information of someone local who can help you in case you get stopped by police or need help on the road. Have all the necessary papers with you if you do get stopped by police, including your immigration card. If you need more information about the immigration form, check one of our earlier videos. I'm gonna pin it in the right top corner. Use paid roads, especially if you're traveling between cities or states. Don't drive at night. We hope this information helps you make a right decision and your drive will be safe and uneventful. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to this channel for more videos on travel, work and everything in between.